Excuse me. Good morning, uh, people watching. I'm 65, Lisa Boyce. I'm going to give you the Gospels in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, that Christ spilled his blood for our past, pre present, and future sins, was buried, and rose again on the third day. That's the Gospel. We could end it right there because that's the Gospel. That's what we believe. That's why we're saved. And that's why we're kept saved, because of the shed blood of Jesus Christ and what he did for us at the cross. That is the gospel. It is grace. He gave us something we don't deserve. It is grace through faith in Christ alone. We don't come to him no other way. It is grace through faith, not of ourselves, not of works, least any man should boast. It is grace that God gave his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, that whoever believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. Once you accept Christ as Savior, and it's only, it's, folks, I, I, you know what? I do this every day. The gospel is so simple that a child can do it. And most children do believe in Jesus. That's why they're innocent. That's why they're clean. Sin cannot enter into heaven. A lot of people are confused about that. That's why the gospel message is simple. You accept Christ as Savior. You believe in what he's done for you at the cross. There's only one way. Admit you're a sinner in need of a Savior. There's only one Savior, and that's Jesus Christ. Believe in him. The book of Romans says, For with the heart man believes, and call out to him. The gospel message is simple. People make it impossible because they want to give you a rule book that thick telling you, how to get saved, what you must do to stay saved. And telling you that you'll lose your salvation if you don't do this. That's crap. I lived like that for 28 years. I know what it's like coming out of that bondage. I was, I was in the Pentecostal movement for 28 years, so I know coming out of bondage of that because no one could tell me what the will of God was. No one could tell me what it meant to obey. And I'm going to tell you what it means to obey. I hear this a lot too. You have to obey. You obey when you accept Christ as Savior. The will of God is to accept His Son as Savior. That's God's will. That's God's will. You obey when you've accepted Christ as Savior. There isn't a 20-foot file, detailed, Pentecostal movement type thing in which to get saved. I came out of this and people say, people always get offended when I talk about how that Pentecostal movement is a, uh, it's basically a movement of fear. That's what they put in you. I dreaded going to church uh, Sundays because of those people. They put fear in you, and it was unnecessary. It was really unnecessary. People still got this thing all screwed up. They really do. They got salvation all messed up. I get people every day writing me, telling me that they're, they are confused about they're coming out of that movement and they're confused and it's no wonder I understand totally I was too until one day the Holy Spirit led me to Robert Breaker and when he explained grace when he explained dispensations it was crystal clear 
I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. And I'm going to tell you something. Look at Robert Breaker's video. If you look back, he did a video on the Pentecostal movement. Both me and him came out of that movement. We talk often. We both came out of that. He did a video about that. Look up that video. Matter of fact, if I can find it, I'll just put a description. Uh, put it in the description box. It's excellent. Of what they believe, why they believe, what they believe, and how false they are. He did a video on it, and it was excellent. When he broke down grace, and when he broke down dispensations, the Bible became clear. Because at that point, I realized... The whole Bible is for us, but the whole Bible is not talking about us. It's not about us. Not the whole Bible. Right now, we are in Paul's dispensation of grace. A lot of people are going to argue about that. That's okay, because if you argue with me, you will be blocked. I'm just letting you know ahead of time. I'm not putting up with it, because it's crystal clear. You want to argue with someone, argue with God. We are in Paul's dispensation of grace, which is quickly, by the way, <laughs> about to come to an end. <clears throat> it is grace through faith in Christ alone. We will never lose our salvation, period. It's a simple, it's simply accepting his death, burial, and resurrection at the cross. That's all it is. I don't know who I'm talking to, but I'm talking to somebody. If you're gay and you used to be and you accept Christ as Savior, you're no longer gay. You're a child of God. I've said that before and got a, got a backlash of people coming after me. And here again, you will be blocked. Because I don't have time to argue with people. I'm just telling you the truth. Someone wanted to argue with me last night about the rapture. Well, the rapture, it doesn't say that we're not going to go through the tribulation. We are going to go through. Okay, let me put it like this. <clears throat> let me put it like this. How would you feel? And this is for either male or female. How would you feel if your fiance beat you to a pulp and then decided to marry you? Their excuse would be, well, let me see how you take this beating, and then, then I'll decide to marry you. That's basically what you're saying about the rapture. So, basically, people who don't believe in a preacher at rapture are saying that we have to first get beat up by God, and then we'll get raptured. That don't make sense. God is not a wife beater. He's not a spouse beater. God is not going to put you through his wrath to come and then rapture you out. No. He sees what's going on. Our time is limited here. The Bible says in the book of 1 Corinthians, I think 1 Thessalonians 5, 9, I believe, says that we are not appointed to the wrath of God. The rapture is the wrath. Because after the rapture, all hell is going to break loose here on earth. It's going to make this time that we're living in right now look like a picnic compared to what's coming. That should be a mic drop moment. I told the person last night, read 1 Thessalonians 5.9. We are not appointed to God's wrath under no circumstances. It's a lot of scripture in the Bible, Old and New Testament, that takes... God's people out of the way when he's about to pour out his wrath. We're not in the tribulation period. Period. I wanted to get that straight. I wanted to get that off my mind because it was bugging me. <clears throat> and let you know that it is grace through faith. You will never lose your salvation. It's a simple, simple thing. Believe in what Jesus Christ did for you. Accept him as Savior and call out to him. It's not difficult. Not at all. And it's not rocket science. It's straightforward. People want to find every little thing to nitpick about. And that's fine. Go ahead and nitpick. But you're not going to nitpick with me. Because I'm here for the long run. I believe with all my heart, 
all my soul that we're about to get raptured. Because God, God's word said it. And I believe it and that settles it. Now, let me give you what's going on for real. <laughs> China. Of course, who else? Well, there are several others, but China. Space debris. A 22.5 metric ton piece of space debris belonging to the Chinese long Mach 5B rocket is about to make an uncontrolled entry into Earth's atmosphere with little information about when or where it will land. <laughs> Here's what we know so far. This goes on, this is off the Washington Examiner. Goes on to say the debris itself is the core stage of the long, it says March 5B rocket, which is surrounded by four side, side bolsters it uses to place its payload directly into low orbit. The long March 5B launch the core module of China's work in progress space station into orbit on April 28th and since then the space debris monitoring groups have kept a close eye on the rocket's core stage falling back to the planet at an uncontrolled pace. It was speculated that the uh, dislodged core would perform an active maneuver to do orbit itself to deorbit itself, uh, though a Thursday press conference with Wang Ju, commander in chief of Long March 5B launch vehicle, failed to mention the maneuver, according to a translation from Space News. The debris got into Earth's orbit after sending parts used to construct China, uh, China space station scheduled to be completed by the end of 2022. China is expecting 10 more launches to carry additional parts of the space station, according to The Guardian. No one knows when or where this thing is going to land. And they can't control it. It says, on Tuesday, the Space Command began uh, providing updates on the status of the loose Chinese rocket saying the re-entry for the debris is expected somewhere around today or later. Leftover debris from the fiery space junk could hit the ground surface wherever it lands. Possible landing locations for the degree for the debris includes New York, Madrid, Beijing, Northern Hemisphere, and Southern Chile, and Wellington, New Zealand, in the Southern Hemisphere, according to Space News. Still, it is impossible to know exactly where it will land, as debris is orbiting Earth roughly every 90 minutes. This is interesting. So nobody knows where this thing is going to land. Nobody has a clue. It's supposed to be somewhere sometime today. Maybe. We'll see. I'm going to link this article in the description box, folks. The pre-trib rapture is real. The Bible says so. And we're not destined for this world. We're not destined for the tribulation. The church will be gone. Revelation 3 says, I will keep you from the hour of temptation. The church isn't mentioned again after Revelation 3 until Revelation 19, when we come back down to earth with Christ. That's why I don't understand. And I've said it before. I don't understand how people can say, oh, we're, it's going to be a post-trip. A post-trip or a mid-trip? A post-trip? How is it going to be a post-trip? So that means that we're going to get raptured, go up, grab a horse, and come back down with Christ. That don't make sense. Where's the supper in between that? Get real, please. Please. Seriously. 
I will link this article in the description box and I will be back with the next video. I have prayed for you guys today, you know, especially with healing. Um, we got a cold snap going on right now. Not snow, but a cold snap. So I'd be glad when it's over. Thank you for your support, and I will be back with the next video. Thanks.